Welcome to the small town of Hollyville. My name is Lainey, and I'm here to show you the ropes. Looking around is pretty easy. You can use the right mouse or the keyboard's cursor or W, A, S, and D keys. You can also zoom in and out using the mouse wheel or the R and F keys. In front of you, there is a small grid upon which you can place buildings. Those buildings are determined by a series of cards. Let's draw some now and get started. That will do nicely. At the top here is the next card in your build list. It's a school, pretty useful. On the card is a small 3x3 three three grid with a building icon in the middle. This displays the building's effect on its adjacent tiles. Blue squares represent plus one point, so the school will give plus one points to the tiles immediately adjacent to it. With a card selected, you can now place it. Notice how the blue highlights represent the area effect as displayed on the card. Let's put the school here. You'll notice there are now some plus score markers on the empty tiles that were affected by the school. If we place point collecting buildings on those positive scoring tiles, we'll get points. It just so happens the next card in your build list is a houses card. By far the most common point collecting building. Notice how it tells you on the card if the building collects points or not. So let's get some points. Great! We now have one point due to the combination of the school's area effect and the house. We have a target to reach for each column. Currently, that target is two. You can see your current target right here in the top right. In order to fulfill that target for each column, we need to use a combination of buildings that affect their surroundings and point collecting buildings. Next up, we have a car wash. This card also has some red squares, which means it will have a negative effect on those tiles. But crucially, it has positive effects in the places we need right now to bring our house up to two. Select and place the car wash so that our house is given another point. We now have two points in the first column thanks to our house, school, and car wash. Also notice how the red negative area effect from the car wash cancelled out one of the points from the school. Now the first column is complete. Look what happens. See that? The column has been cleared. That means you bank the points from that column, which are then multiplied and added to your total score. It also means you get a new empty column to build in here on the right. The immediate aim of the game is always to clear the first column, but you'll have to plan ahead with your building placements in order to do that for future columns. Those are the basics. But let me show you what happens if you forget to place a point-collecting building in a column. Fill this column with the following non-point-collecting buildings. If any building area effects spill off the side of the grid, they will have no effect. You can use this to your advantage sometimes. Now we have no point-collecting buildings in this column. This will, and not just because we have a brewery and factory next to a school. With no means of collecting points, this column cannot reach its target. Therefore, it's just going to sit there while we fill up the rest of the empty land. We need to force clear it. Once the first column is filled, you'll notice this little button flashing at you. All we have to do is click it to force clear. Great! However, force clearing isn't free, it costs you one life. You can see how many lives you have left here. Make sure you use your lives sparingly. Once you run out, you'll fail the level. Now see if you can complete past this column here using the next batch of buildings.
you're ready for the next challenge.